the first clockwork update of the year has arrived and it adds some cool new items like the gyro which helps stabilize whatever it's attached to. We also get some revamped textures and models for the physics infuser as well as the command seat. And something that I find quite exciting is the addition of new ores and survival recipes because that means that clockwork is becoming more than just a mod that we play around with in creative and something that will enhance our survival worlds. This update also fixes a few bugs and very importantly it finally brings clockwork to Minecraft versions 1.20.1 and 1.19.2. Now this isn't the much anticipated melting point update that adds new and improved balloons and afterblazers. That's still being worked on, but progress is being made faster than before because now there's a whole team of people working on clockwork. So without further ado, let's have a look at the new features. So if we go into our creative menu, we can see that they added the altitude meter and uh, they added a pretty good ponder to it. So let's go have a look. So basically what it's telling us is that you can configure the altimeter or the altitude meter to a certain altitude and then it'll output a redstone signal when you've reached that altitude. And I'll show you an example a little bit later. So moving on, we also have the gyro. So the gyro is going to stabilize your ships and I'll also show you an example of that. Uh, we can see that the command seat has a new texture so it's red now and I think it looks a little bit better. Uh, so the physics infuser also has a new texture. And there's new ores. There's the Deep Slate Auric Ore and the End Auric Ore. So that's pretty cool. And those, I assume, will give you Auric Crystals. Okay, so the Auric Crystals are then, you polish it to get the Auric Cube, and then you press it to get the Auric Matrix. And we'll have a look at the recipes in just a sec. So we also have an incomplete Auric Designator that you use as part of the process to build the Auric Designator. So if we go into just enough items, we can see that they've added crafting recipes. So if I look at the physics bearing, we can see that it uses the auric matrix. And actually, anything that adds physics seems to use the auric matrix. Okay, so for example, if we look at the physics infuser, it requires the auric matrix. So you get the idea. An auric matrix is required for anything where you add physics. So they also have a recipe for the new altitude meter and the new gyro. All right, so let's have a look at the items. So we have the physics infuser where the only thing that has changed is the texture. Here's the new altitude meter. So if I right click on it, I have this UI. And basically what this means is that I select uh, the height where I want it to send out a signal. So I'm going to scroll this down all the way to zero or even we can go below zero and it'll output a redstone signal. So if I put this all the way higher than we are now, for example, the light's going to turn off because it is no longer outputting a redstone signal. All right, so here are the two new ores. We have the deep slate and the end versions. So I'm just going to mine this, just show you how it works. And oh, huh, okay, so you got to be clever because they can escape. So the second you touch or start mining one of these ores, it's going to start floating up. It's going to turn into a physics object and rise up. But you see, if I attach a block to it, it's going to make it too heavy and it's going to fall down. So if I break this, well, then the piece of ore is going to start flying back up. Oh yeah, see that was a that was a bad idea. If I attach a piece of ore to it, it's going to it's not going to bring it back down. It's going to keep going up. So if I place it, for example, it's going to stay. But if I if I so much as jump on it, it's going to start rising up. So maybe that's a little dangerous in survival if you're standing on ore and you start digging, you're going to go up and you can fall down and die. So, how do you do? How do you mine these? Well, you just put a block over it and then that's gonna stop it from flying up so just make sure that there's something above it when you start mining and that's weird it didn't seem to drop anything so maybe you have to put this through some sort of uh, contraption or maybe it's just not uh, maybe the drops are just not implemented yet so um, if I go here and I look for oh, that's interesting the oh here it is the orc crystal so probably it's just not implemented yet so anyways now you'll know when you find this in your world, you got to make sure that you have something above it or else it's going to fly away. Okay, so now this is probably the coolest part of this update. It's the gyro. So how does this thing work? Well, first of all, you have to power it. So I've got a creative uh, motor right here. And if you right click it, it opens up a UI and there's okay, there's the Z axis, there's the X axis. Basically, you select how you want it to stabilize your ship. So I have a ship that I've set this up on and I'll show you in just a minute, but this is the UI for the gyro. All right, so here's the new command seat. Nothing has changed, I don't think, except for the texture. So it looks uh, looks a lot better, I find. And then these are just the new items. So you have the auric cube, the auric matrix, the incomplete auric designator, the auric designator, and the auric crystal. So you polish an auric crystal to get an auric cube. 
um, and then you press it to get an auric matrix, which you then use in your recipes. Oh, and another thing is that they changed how the Gravitron works. So now you'll see I have the Gravitron and there's four modes to it. So there's grab, there's assemble, there's grab symbol and there's disassemble. Okay, cool. So grab is how uh, the Gravitron always worked. It's just you grab something and you can move it around. But what's cool is now you can disassemble. So all you do is you just right click and it'll disassemble. It'll align to the grid as closely as it can. So you just right click and it's gonna just snap to the grid and it's gonna disassemble. So when you disassemble, it actually loses its um, auric designation. So all you have to do is right click with your auric designator, first position, select the whole area, it's just one block. Um, and then I can just go and hit assemble. Okay, but what about grab symbol? Okay, well let's designate this blue piece of wool right here. And I'm gonna go to grab symbol. So all I do is right click and I both assemble and grab it. Ah, oh, pretty neat. Oh, to put it down, I guess I gotta go back to grab and then right click to drop it. Okay, so that's the uh, new features that have been added to the Gravitron. There's grab, assemble, grab symbol, and disassemble. All right, so here's a little ship that I set up that's just to show you the new features. So it's not very useful, but basically it's a propeller um, controlled by the command seat. So I'm gonna turn off the gyroscope because I wanna show you how the gyroscope affects the stability of this ship. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go in the command seat, I think I've set up so spacebar makes me fly shift no I know it's backwards I think there we go so right away you're gonna see this thing is not stable I'm flipping over and um, this is not a usable thing so the reason why I flip over if I do f3 plus b you'll see that this uh, yellow cube is the center of mass it's offset from where my thrust is coming on so it's there's gonna be a rotation about this yellow cube there's gonna be a rotation around it because it's not aligned so obviously this is unusable, but if I activate the gyroscope, okay, we're gonna see what happens. So we're gonna let it spin. And by the way, I've selected this middle thing. This middle thing will keep it stable and we'll see how that works. So if I go here in my chair and I go to fly, you'll see suddenly it's stable now. Suddenly this doesn't go crazy and flip over. That's the gyroscope doing its job. Okay. So what about the other settings on the gyroscope? What do they do? Well, if you see here, there's the red and the blue axis, and I've set up pieces of wool here, red wool and blue wool, to uh, show you where the axes are located on this ship. So if I go in here and I click 90 on the red axis, we'll see what happens. So it rotates 90 degrees around the red axis. So the red axis passes through here, and it rotates 90 degrees around there. If I go ahead and I press the center button, well, it's going to go back to how it was. So a real life gyro does not behave like this. A real life gyroscope, it only resists rotation. So what this one is doing is it's actually, I guess, forcing stability around an axis. It will move you to that axis. So it's not exactly realistic, but it gives you a lot of stability. It makes it simpler to design a stable ship. So the same thing I can do uh, the blue axis. I'll click on 90 and it'll rotate around... Um, that blue point that was that was a little weird that didn't exactly behave as I expected but it did rotate around the blue axis but it tipped over. yeah no it tipped over it's supposed to rotate this way it was just a bit more aggressive than I was uh, expecting okay so let's try that again red it's rotating about the red axis and then we see it rotates around the blue axis. So it actually maintained its rotation around the red, so you can combine rotations this way. And if I go here and I just press in the center, well, it's gonna go back. So that's pretty neat, that's how the gyro works. Um, so let's look at these altitude meters in action. So here I have, I've set up a bunch of altitude meters. Um, I've set this one's height to 60, this one's to 70, and I've done that all the way up to 100. So right now the ground level is 56. So if I get up here, and I start going up, we'll see these start to light up pretty quickly. So you see as I rise up, the altitude meters will light up. All right, I'm at 100 meters, I'm beyond 100 meters, and as I go back down, they'll instantaneously turn off. All right, so these are the features that have been added to the latest update of Clockwork. I hope that you found this video helpful, and if you'd like to support me, then please consider subscribing and activating notifications. Thank you for watching.